Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. In this video, we're going to talk about Corinebacterium diphtheria, right? A causative agent of a disease known as diphtheria, right? We're going to start with uh, morphology, right? So this bacteria is a gram-positive rod, uh, is pleomorphic and club-shaped. Uh, it doesn't form spores, so it's non-spore forming, it's non-motile, it's facultative anaerobe and it contains an enzyme called catalase, so it's catalase positive. On transmission, this bacteria is transmitted via uh, respiratory droplets from a carrier. Uh, talking about virulence, I will talk about this again in clinical features, but you need to know that uh, this bacteria is a uh, ability to form like uh, to cause pseudomembrane formation in the pharynx which will serve as a base from where uh, it secretes its toxin right so in the next slide we are going to talk about the toxins right so this bacteria uh, secrete an exotoxin uh, it's coded by a bacterial phage not all corneal bacteria have uh, this toxin right so they gain it via lysogenic conversion you need to know that lysogenic conversion right so the exotoxin has two subunit a subunit and b subunit the a subunit blocks protein synthesis by inactivating elongation factor 2 right uh, subunit a blocks protein synthesis then B subunit, B for binding, right? So B, uh, it provides enter into cardiac and the neural tissue or cardiac and the neural cells, right? Right, so uh, this exotoxin is like an anti-human antibiotic as it inhibits eukaryotic protein synthesis just as tetracycline inhibits protein synthesis in what? In bacteria right so it's anti-human antibiotic right okay uh let's talk about the clinical features right firstly uh it begins with a mild sore throat with fever initially uh then uh the second thing very important pseudomembrane right so uh, the pseudomembrane forms in the pharynx right uh so it looks like this right so you see this one is the pseudomembrane right so uh you as you can see this uh can actually block uh like the airway so it can lead to um suffocation right and sometimes uh again here you can see like it can lead to like uh dysphagia maybe you, you might not be uh, um, able to eat properly right okay uh uh, one more thing, if you remove this pseudomembrane, it can lead to massive bleeding. And as I say, this is a base where a lot of uh, exotoxin is secreted from. So if you remove it, then the exotoxin will spread quickly, right? Uh, okay. And bleeding, bleeding is uh, a, another complication here, right? Okay, uh, other clinical features, because I said uh, it mainly targets the heart and the neural tissue, right? So, on in the heart, myocarditis, right? So, it causes myocarditis, uh, which will cause um, AV conduction blockage and uh, dysarrhythmias, right? Dysrhythmia, or, or arrhythmias, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, in neural tissues, right, is if there is involvement of neural tissue, this can lead to peripheral nerve palsies, uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome-like. Okay, so, okay, Guillain-Barre-like syndrome. It's not uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, but the features are almost the same, right? Uh, and palatal paralysis and cranial neuropathies, all right? So uh, let's talk about diagnosis. For diagnosis, uh, here you need to know uh, two main things, uh, gram staining and culture, right? Starting with the gram stain, right? As I said, it's a gram-positive bacteria, right? So you will see gram-positive 
pleomorphic roads, which are sometimes described as like Chinese letters. Sometimes they say uh, V and W letters, right? It just depends with the source, right? That's on Gramstein. Then on culture, uh, the first medium is potassium telluride agar, right? So if you grow this bacteria in this agar, you will get dark black colonies, right? That's telluride agar, right? The second one, uh, loeffler staining or loeffler coagulated blood serum medium. Right, so if you uh, grow the bacteria in this medium, after 12 hours of growth, you, you stain with methylene blue. Uh, so this will result in reddish granules. You can see reddish, uh, reddish granules, also known as beb, Bebs Ernst granules. Right, okay, so to conclude this video, let's talk about uh, treatment. Right, so firstly, uh, antitoxin, right, antidiphtheric antitoxin, right, so the diphtheria antitoxin only inactivate the circulating toxin, not those which are already in the cells, right, so, okay, let me read, uh, so it targets, in, uh, uh, it only inactivates circulating toxins, which has not yet reached its target tissue, so this might be, this must be administered quickly, to prevent damage of heart and nervous tissue, right? So that's about antitoxin. But the first thing you do, you check uh, sensitivity. If the patient is uh, sensitive to, to, to this antitoxin, then you don't give him or her, right? Okay, the second thing uh, is uh, antibiotics, right? So penicillin and erythromycin, right? So uh, these two will kill the bacteria, preventing further exotoxin release, uh, rendering the patient non-contagious, right? Uh, on prevention, actually, there is a vaccine known as DTAP, right? DTAP for diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis, right? Uh, acellular pertussis, uh, pertussis, I had to emphasize this one. Uh, we'll talk about it in pertussis, right? But just to know that uh, like this uh, diphtheria component of this DTAP is like an inactivated, it's formerly an inactivated exotoxin, right? Okay. Uh, I think that's all you need to know about uh, this bacteria, specifically for the exams. Please, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. Thank you so much.